Hello. Hello. My name is Keshwani. I think I need some water. Some liquid is what I meant to say. My name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the revised GRE. The second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble, you can find a solution to it from day number 251 to 400. As I said, we are done. We are finished doing almost all the problems. The problems that appear in this book are all of them almost exactly the same problems and in most cases appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Original solutions tend to be a little, lengthy, uh, little lengthier and they tend to be a little bit in depth. Right now we are in the middle of solving some quantitative comparison questions some quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Because the other two, books that I, other two books that I just showed you simply do not contain enough quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important questions. They are still a very big chunk of the exam. To get some extra practice, from day number 401, we started solving quantitative comparison questions from this book here. And we are on page number right now, 242. Let's take a look at it. The very first problem on that we're going to do here is number 12. Problem number 12, when it appeared in the real exam, problem number 12, when it appeared in the real exam, only 35% of people, only 35% of people had luck with it, 65% of people missed it. So here's what here's how the problem goes. We're given a triangle, we're given a triangle, they call it triangle ABC. So far, so riveting. Point P appears somewhere in the triangle here, and we join the line segment. Line segment PA, line segment PB, and line segment PC. And we are told that these segments, segments, segments PA, PB, and PC, we are told are are angle bisectors of triangle ABC. We are told that the line segment PA, PB and PC we are told are angle bisector of the triangle. We are told that this angle, this part right here, this angle is y degrees. We are told that this is x degrees and we are told that this guy right here is 33 degrees. What we are being asked to compare is column A. In column A we have x plus y and in column B we have 57. x plus y versus x plus y versus 57. One more time I want to make sure that you understand you get everything here. So we have a triangle here, point P appears somewhere in the middle here. We draw three line segments from P point P, we have segment PA, segment PB and segment PC. All these, all three of these segments we are told are angle bisectors of triangle ABC. This is how it appears. This is how they use the language. This is how the language appears in the, in the, in the question. Segment PA, PB, PC are angle bisectors of triangle ABC. This is x degrees, this is y degrees, this is 33 degrees and we are being asked to compare x plus y versus 57. What I want you to do is pause the video at this point, solve the problem yourself. Once we have finished solving it, then compare your work against the work that we'll do together in a second. You understand? I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. I'll get out of your way. Here we go. The most important bit of information here, the most crucial bit of information in this question is right here. And for your benefit, I was being nice to you by putting it in capital letters. In the real exam, it does not appear in capital letters, obviously. It's the most important word here, angle bisectors. What does it mean? for a line to be, for a line segment to be an angle bisector, to be an angle bisector I should say. For example, here's an angle and here's line L. 
this line L here, if we are told that this line is an angle bisector, what does it mean? Well, it means exactly what it says. Angle bisector means, bisector means, bi means two. It cuts it into two equal parts. So if this is angle X, if this is X degrees, then so is this one. Because we are told that line L is an angle bisector. These segments PA, PB, PC, they are all angle bisectors of the three angles of the triangle ABC. Let's see what we can do with it. Well, we know this is x degrees. If this is x degrees, then this top part must also be x degrees. We know this is y degrees, which means that the bottom part here must also be y degrees. This is 33. If that's 33, then this part here, second part here, must also be 33. What do we know about the sum of the angles in a triangle? Sum of the angles in a triangle, we know, have to add up to 180. Angle A, angle A is made up of x and x. So 2x plus angle C, angle C is made up of y and y. 2y plus angle B, which is made up of 33 and 33. 2 times 33. And they have to add up to 180. They have to add up to 180. I see 2x, I see 2y, I see 2 times 33. Let's divide the whole equation by 2. And we do that, we find that x plus y plus 33 equals 90. We're not interested in anything else, we just want to find out the value of x plus y. Well, let's subtract 33 from both sides. We subtract 33 from both sides, we find that x plus y equals 57. What do you know? x plus y, x plus y e equals 57. The answer is C. The answer to this problem is C. Let's go on to the next one, number 13. Problem number 13. Problem number 13 is also a geometry question. Again, I'm going to set it up, and as soon as I finish setting it up, pause the video. Number 13, when it appeared in the exam, 32% of the people got it right. What was the percentile in the previous one that we just finished? Number 12? 35%. This is 32%. We have a line, we have a line L, line L, we are told, has an equation of y equals to x plus b. This is given to us, we are told that the line L has an equation of y equals to x plus b. As you can see, they are being quite generous so far. And here's, here's the picture. Here is your line L. We are told it goes through at the point with the coordinates of C and O. I, I hope you can read my writing here. This is C, quantity C and O, uh, 0 rather. C and 0, and it goes through this point which is 0 and B. That's it. That's a 0. I don't want you to get confused. This is just a 0. 0B and C0. What they want you to compare is this. Column A, column B, A versus negative B over C. A versus negative B over C. One more time. I want to make sure that you get everything here. It says line, the line Y equals to AX plus B is graphed in a rectangular coordinate system line a, y equals to ax plus b is graphed in a rectangular coordinate axis. Right here, I'm reading it verbatim now from the book. Right here is the line gra graph of the line, line, line L in the xy Cartesian coordinate. And we're being asked to compare the quantity A versus negative b over c. Negative b over c. Pause the video and do it yourself. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause and then we'll do it together.
Well, here we go. We want to compare A versus negative B over C. The easiest, the quickest, the simplest way to analyze the line, particularly when it's presented in this form, is to look at the the points where it cuts the x and the y axis. Obviously, the I forget what they're called. The the what is it, what is it called when it, at the point where the line cuts the x axis is the x uh, the x uh, I, I forget the intercept and the y intercept. Let's find out, shall we? For example, when when y is equal to zero, right here, when y is equal to zero, right here, when y is equal to zero, when y is equal to zero, we put it in here, we told we are told that y equals x plus b. Y equals x plus b. When y is equal to zero, we'll find that zero is equal to x plus b. Subtract b from both sides. x plus b, is that right? Yes, x plus b. Subtract b from both sides and we find let me start again when, when y is equal to 0 when y is equal to 0 when y is equal to 0 we know that x equals c I wasn't paying attention my, my concentration drifted for a second here when y is equal to 0 we know we know that x is equal to c. We are told that right here. We are told that when y is equal to 0, x is equal to c. Let's put that in here. x has to be c. When y is 0, x has to be c. So y is equal to x plus b. When y is 0, x has to be c plus b. That's it. Now we are done. We are interested in looking for the value of a. We have to get the a by itself. Let's subtract b from both sides. So a, a c equals b. The a c equals AC is going to equal negative B rather. You bring the AC on the other uh, you bring the B to this other side. And we want the A by itself. So A is going to be negative B over C. There we go. Negative B over B over C. What do we find? We find that A is equal to, we find that A is equal to negative B over C. A is equal to A is equal to negative b over c. The answer is c. Answer is c because we just found that the two quantities are equal. We just found that a equals negative b over c. That's it. We're done. The answer is c. What we're going to do now is to spend a few moments trying to understand if it makes any sense. As far as the exam is concerned, we are done. We are, we are being asked to compare the two quantities and math and the math tells us that the two quantities are equal. One more time, here's the equation of the line. We are told that y equals ax plus b. We know that when y is equal to 0, when y is equal to 0, we know c has to equal c right here. Or rather, x has to equal c right here. That's the point. Let's call these points a and b. Let's call them point a and point b. So we're looking, we're looking at point a. At point a, at point a, when x is equal to c, y is 0 because the coordinates of points a are c and 0. That's what it is. When y is equal to 0, x is has to equal c. When y is 0, x is c. And then we just solve for a and we call it negative b over c. That's all. They're equal. What I'm trying to understand is that y is, for example, here's what, uh, what should we do it? I'm going to do it here. As far as the question is concerned, we're done. We don't need this anymore. Look at this equation here. y is equal to ax plus b. When, an equation, when the equation is written in this form, when the equation is written in this form, we all know that A represents a slope. A represents the slope of the line. And we just found out that A equals negative B over C. A equals negative B over C. Listen very carefully. What I'm trying to understand is this. A, we know, represents a slope in this line, in this equation. A represents a slope in this equation. And we just found out that A equals negative B over C. How can A equal to a negative B over C when I can clearly see that this line is positively sloped? This is a positively sloped line. I don't understand it. So why is it negative B over C? Let's find out. Shall we? Let's find out. We're going to calculate the slope. We could, going from, going from point A to point B. Going from point A to point B, we can actually calculate the slope. Slope, we know, 
equals to change in y over the change in x. Going from a to which is why I make a point of, of, of telling you where are we going from. We're going from a to b. a is our starting point, b is our final point. From going from a to b, change in y is going to be 0, it's going to be 0 minus b. 0 minus b over change in x is going to be c minus 0. c minus 0, which is negative b over c, which is exactly what we found right here. That is the slope. The slope, that's what we're trying to understand. The slope of this line is negative b over c. This is this. That's that, which is why a equals negative b over c, because the slope of this line is negative b over c. What we're trying to understand is that how can it be negative when the line is clearly positively sloped? But there is a reason for it, and the reason is this. Let's write this, let's write this as, let's write this as negative b over c, like this. And let's do it on the top here. The slope is equal to negative or b over c. This is negative, don't forget. And this is negative, b right, is right here, b is right here, which we know is a positive quantity, over c, as you can see, c, that's where the, that's where the solution to our puzzle lies, the c is actually a negative quantity, c is actually a negative quantity, because it appears on the negative part, negative part of the x-axis. c, whatever it is, the value of the c, c is a negative quantity, which is why we have a, we have a situation here, what we have is, what we have is negative of some positive quantity divided by, some positive quantity divided by some negative quantity. And of course that's going to equal to, positive times negative is going to be negative, and we have a negative on the top, so it is in fact positive. The slope is in fact a positive quantity. It's not a negative quantity, it is in fact positive quantity, because the bottom is a negative quantity. Top is positive, and the bottom is negative. C is negative. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I think I've done it again. Explain, explain the hell out of something. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.